in last week's video. I can't help thinking that I have, I have made a mistake. I, I shouldn't have bought this car. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. And today, as promised, we're going to be looking at the bill that I received last week from the garage just for getting this car through its MOT. But not only that, because I thought it would actually be quite a good opportunity and a good idea to look at the total amount of money that I've now spent on this, well, what was 1,400 pound Jaguar. It's, um, well, it's a little bit horrifying actually. But first, it's time to take matters into my own hands. <laughs> Equipment. <laughs> okay, so you might remember in last week's episode, I was moaning about this wonky exhaust. And um, well, I drove the car home from picking it up from the big bill, which I'm going to show you in a minute. And the first thing I noticed was that there was a new noise coming from the back and it was this, the exhaust knocking. Now it's really hard to actually see under there or anything, so I'm gonna jack the car up a little bit and, and take a better look. Okay, so you don't actually need to jack the car up very high to see that it's not this rubber bit that's come off, it's actually up here at the top. Looks like the actual bolt that goes into the bar inside of the bumper has rusted away. Oh look, what on earth are those? They're not cable ties, are they? What sort of backstreet mechanic would do that? Okay, so no, in all seriousness, because I was whining so much like a little girl in that last video about the sound coming from the exhaust, I did do a really bodgy job. Bodgy job? That doesn't sound good, does it? I did a bodge job and used cable ties to try and rectify the issue which didn't work but it has actually improved it to the point where in all honesty it's not knocking around anymore at least not noticeably when i'm driving but clearly the actual bolt has corroded away so that'll be a bumper off job to get that properly addressed Let's lower that back down gently come on there little jackie so it looks like corrosion is responsible for that exhaust mishap and well in all honesty, I think the big C word is going to be a recurring theme with this car. And no, not the C word that describes the driver of this Jag that also ends in T. You'll be pleased to know that I have actually been making plans with a garage that's really keen to make some YouTube comment around rectifying all the issues with this Jag. And I'm gonna be getting hands on as well. So do stay tuned for that. But in all honesty, we can't really do much right now that exhaust thing it's not bothering me so much anymore because well it's not really making the noise but it will need addressing properly but now is probably a good time to actually address the topic which you're all here for which is well how much money does this car owe me now how much money have i spent on this jaguar in the well no more than three months that i've owned the car you're going to want to stay tuned till the end of this video because the number is but a little bit scary. So come with me then, because here in the boot, I love how you press the emblem to open it and then it just glides on up. In here, well, not only do we have the old headlight, but we have got this, the original booklet that came with the car in this beautiful chocolate color. But within here, I have all the receipts from all the work that I've done with the car. The rest of them, I think, are behind here. And we're gonna go through all of these right now but believe it or not there's actually more stuff that's not even included in here that will need to uh, be looked at in this video as well so it does all add up a little bit so just prepare yourselves for that so given that i have spent so much time and money on this car it makes sense to double up and use it as a living room as well so we might as well sit in here and talk about all of this paperwork Essentially, I want to get straight to it. This is going to include the purchase price of the car, which we all know was £1,400, and then the works that I've had done to it since. But stick around, because there's also some other bits that are not in here that I've had to spend on the car. So starting off with the actual purchase of the car itself, which seems crazy now, £1,400. It almost seemed at the time like it was, I don't know, what would you say, too good to be true? Oh, wait! It was. No, but in all seriousness, I knew what I was getting into. Okay, admittedly not 100%, but I have done this before. I've bought very expensive cars very cheaply, and they've always ended up costing a lot of money. 
this S-Type has just probably been on the upper echelon of that. It's slightly surprised me just how expensive this has proved to be. The thing you have to just keep remembering though is that they'll never make this car again. I mean, quite literally, they'll never make the S-Type again. They haven't made it for 15 years now or so, but it's a special and rare thing. You bear with me while I try and dig out all of the receipts because there's quite a few. I think we're probably there. Oh yeah, the handbook actually closes now. Okay, so when I first picked up the car, there was a couple of little issues. It was losing uh, coolant quite badly, and there was a bit of a misfire. The engine, I can't exactly remember, but I think at around 60 to 70 miles an hour, it would hesitate somewhat. So I took it to a place where they sorted all of that. I had an ignition coil, a spark plug, an expansion tank, which was quite a hefty part at 166 pounds plus VAT. Quite a lot for basically a piece of plastic that holds your coolant. Uh, the coolant itself and P and P. What's P and P? Postage and packaging, I guess. God, that's a bit cheeky. Twelve pound ninety-five. Gosh, and the labour to go with it. So anyway, so to fix the coolant issue, also I thought, and the misfire, that was a grand total of five hundred and fifty-five pounds and seventy-eight pence. Insert ding noise. Then you all know the story. I won't bore you with it. We had to go back several more times for coolant fixes. Actually, the second time I went, they um, fixed a pipe, supposedly, like Jubilee clipped a pipe back on, and they didn't charge me for that, which is fair enough. But obviously, the car then had to go back pretty much immediately after because they missed something else. And that was the thermostat housing, the thermostat itself, the seal, the thermostat cover, and the O-ring, plus the labour. That came to £232.97. So with the 555 five, five, and the 232 we spent about 800 quid getting that coolant leak sorted, although they did also rectify a misfire issue as well. The next thing that came up was the MOT, which the car failed on, as we all know. That cost 54 quid, but it goes into the pile of bills nonetheless. Then I decided to take it to a second place for a second opinion, which I think was a, a good idea. I still stand by that. I don't think there was anything wrong with doing that. And, well, this was the big one that hit me last week that made me sort of go, whoa, because I just wasn't expecting it. And I want to preface this again by last week when I filmed that video, I was upset. I was shocked and uh, I just felt a little bit disheartened that I just spent so much money. But now looking back at it, they did do a lot of work. It was all work that needed doing. And again, it's a 24-year-old car. I wanted to get it through the MOT and this was what it was going to take but I will say that now going forward as you will see on the channel I want to undertake some of these works that I can do myself myself so the parts that got replaced then we had two tie rods done we had the upper rear wishbone arms done we had the anti roll bar links at the back done as well and we had a secondhand headlamp for the driver's side which needed replacing for it to get through the MOT also, they did have a, a major problem getting the wheels off because another thing I didn't check when I bought the car was for the locking wheel nut. It didn't come with the car. And so they had to, well, use brute force and, and break the nuts to get the get the wheels off the car. So we had a set of wheel nuts, which came to what, 38 quid for the car. But anyway, all of these plus the labour, it came to a grand total of £1,586 and 99 pence and that is precisely 186 pounds and 99 pence more than the purchase price of the car and that was just to get it through an MOT test so that's why I uh, I was so shocked at that but the more I looked at it the more that they actually did the less upset I was by that but yeah if you look here the labor cost was 630 pounds of that 1600 so assuming I did the labour myself and I bought the parts where they bought the parts from, um, I would have paid less than a thousand pounds to do all of that work. Now with the passage of time, I've calmed down a bit. I'm happy to have the car back. I'm happy I did the work because I enjoy making videos with it. And I think this is an interesting series with this car that we're having because it really is showing the truth about owning these, these cheaper older cars. And it's teaching me a lot too because Perhaps I could have done more due diligence when buying the thing. Maybe I should have got an inspection. I could have done a lot of things, but I didn't. And this is just the reality of it. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's 1,600 quid that I wasn't prepared to spend. But 
we spent it and we've got the car back. And as I've said, we're going to be improving the car even more with less input from garages going forward because, well, I've seen all your comments and you're really keen to see me get my hands dirty and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. But as I mentioned, there's more. Let me open up the laptop here where I have my spreadsheet. YouTube car finances. Okay, so there's a few other minor bits in here that all add up and I'll be honest with you, I've included things like my insurance and my tax, which comes to around 200 pounds or so for the time that I've owned the car on this total. But there's just been a few other things like I did a car check when I bought the car, that cost me 13 pounds and seven pence. I bought some batteries for the key fob to try and fix that because the, the central locking doesn't work. That was four pounds. I spent 27 pounds on some wipers and an air filter, which I did myself. I don't think that made it into a video. And then I did a video about how I thought my head gasket had failed, which I really did at the time, and, and bought a pressure tester and some steel seal, and that came to £73.98. pence. I bought number plate sticky pads, number plate screws. I actually listed the car on eBay at one point, which was 20 quid. Um, I'm really glad no one bought the car because that was just before it went for the MOT. Now, in fairness, I said on the listing that the price I was asking for the car was with a fresh MOT, but that would have never worked because um, the car needed a lot of work doing for the MOT. But anyway, I'm glad no one bought it because that would have just added some more complexities. And there's lots of other little things that, that come into it, including things like the jerry cans that I bought for my fuel economy trip challenge. But anyway, the total amount of money that I've spent and I'm into this car now, there's a few other things on here that you won't have seen yet that are coming up in future videos is, are you ready? £5,199.14. So a car that I bought at the end of October for £1,400, now at the end of February, owes me £5,200. And I think that is quite shocking. But to be fair, that is everything. That includes my insurance and my tax on the car as well as a few other bits and bobs. So when you look at it on paper, it is rather horrifying. And if you said to me in October when I was buying the car that it was gonna cost me more than 5,000 pounds in just a few months, I would probably have declined to purchase it. But actually, the other way of looking at it is that I feel I've been able to learn a lot with this car straight away. I've grown to love the brand of Jaguar through owning this car, believe it or not, I really have. My fiance absolutely loves the car, so much so that we're going to use it at our wedding. I completed that fuel economy run from Land's End to Nest Point in this car, which was a memory I'll cherish forever, especially because I dedicated that video to my grandpa for a particular reason at the time. And so, you know what? I don't regret at all buying this car. Like I said in my last video, I thought I might have done. I don't, I absolutely don't because Every day is a school day. Every day is a learning day. And to be honest with you, I'm really excited about the future with this car. If you could see my calendar with some of the stuff we've got planned in terms of getting this thing back up to scratch, I think you'd be excited too. So do stick around for those videos. If you're one of my 65% of viewers or so that are watching this video right now and you're not subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe because that really helps me to carry on throwing money at this car. So stay tuned because next week we're getting new tyres fit to the car all round, which I think is going to make such a big difference. That rear right hand side tyre is 15 years old. So that's going to be night and day. Comment below whether you think I'm mad for spending the amount of money that I've spent on this car already. Would you have scrapped it by now? Or do you agree with me that actually there's nothing like this left on the road? It's worth every penny and I should keep it going at whatever expense. I'd love to hear from you guys as always. Thank you so much for watching the videos and I will see you in the next episode next week very, very soon. While I was sat in the car going through all of those bills, this was killing me inside. <laughs> I'd made so much mess on the passenger side carpet. Ah!